The cash register? Yeah, the guy the guy that's like you tallying said the it check up. Stand. I don't know what to call it. I panicked and I said <laughs> <laughs> I panicked. I got, My hands are sweating. I don't know what to I do. I got all sweaty. I called it a check stand. <laughs> Brandy, you're back. I'm back. Chamber Yay. check in. What is this, number four? Number four. God bless America, girl. Thank you for coming. Of course. Thank you for having me. Um, and by the way, shout out on uh, that burger because okay, yeah. so the burger brawl begins. Uh, we even we were trying to figure ball. out the best burger in Eagle for a handful of weeks, and I actually asked them when I went into Rembrandt's and today. And it's a wrap. I they have really good buns, but I'm it's brioche. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So and I was gonna say put the bun on the side, but even for that, I'm like. I can't eat the brioche bun, so we might as well not even waste it. Right. Let it go to somebody who can enjoy it. Right. Um, they said their number one requested item is their burger. So I'm really hoping this is a Kobe beef with bacon in the actual meat itself. And it's from Porterhouse, which is another awesome member. Okay, so Rembrandt serves Porterhouse patties then. Yes, oh, they do. Oh, yeah. yeah. Okay, and then uh, I got a um, loaded Southwest french fry yes. oh my gosh yeah. dude and it has pico de gallo and a jalapeno oh. a cilantro crema and another kind of crema i'm not sure what it is don't be a crema <laughs> crema okay. snob and then your crema is so good i don't know like you did gonna, you guys finish it uh we got the two-thirds of the way through it was a lot of crema and it you, is have a lot to, of crema. you have to eat it with things that we usually don't i should have just dumped it on eggs and stuff oh it's but so it was good like we were going after it chips and things like yeah. that i'm like i can't keep eating chips like this is so Carrots. i was like Oh. We eat it with all of our veggies. Like it becomes just the like. That would have been the play. Yeah, totally. I screwed that up. Omelets. Okay. It's really good on an omelet with um, like a cojita cheese on the top. I know you and your milk pills. I feel bad. Okay. No, it's fine. I'm going to take a bite because I got to take a bite yeah. now. I'm, I'm starving. Too. You have sauces over there. Can you pass me some sauces? Um, These aren't sauces. These are actually syrups for this awesome granola. Oh, boo. They have a homemade granola. And I was like, I have to try that. That looks pretty baller. It does. And those strawberries. Parfait. Oh. As Eddie Murphy says, everybody likes parfait. Oh, we just watched Shrek the other day. Yes. The whole series all over again. It's great. It is great. That oh. was one of the first ones, uh, one of the first cartoons that was done well. And I remember watching it as, I was like a teenager when it came out. I'm like, all right, all right, this is a good movie. Because, you know, you get to like 16 and you're like, I'm not going to watch a kid's movie. <clears throat> and then you hit like Shrek and stuff and you're like, oh, that's pretty good. Then they came out with like Toy Story mm -hmm. and you're like crying and stuff. And Oh, that yeah. Shrek movie? I laughed and gasped harder yeah. than I ever did as a kid. It's like, pretty great. I got the jokes. Yeah. You know, you think you get all the jokes as a kid. Oh, you're like, right. oh, that's really funny. And then I'm like, oh my gosh, like it is really funny. So right. we were on a, but, it was like watching Mrs. Doubtfire the other day. Oh my God. I forgot how funny that movie yes. was because as an adult, I haven't seen it. I watched it as a kid and it was funny and it's Robin Williams and he's always funny. Right. But like, okay, I got to watch your first bite. Yeah, I got to say this, this looks really, looks it like is cooked. cooked. Perfect. Yeah, hang on. Let me get a picture of this. Um, yeah, Mrs. Doubtfire was wild. And as a kid, I remember seeing that. Watching him like, you know, what, dance on the table with the pony and yes. stuff. And like, that looks like so much fun. Or like he's running and having to put the costume back yeah. on and oh off and gosh. on and off. Oh. Helps on the way. <laughs> Helps on the way, dear. Mm -hmm. mm. Oh, yeah. Oh, my gosh. Yes. That's really good. Yes. Go Rembrandt's for the win. Okay. So. Okay. The burger brawl is on. The burger brawl is on. Dude, the bacon on the inside. Hell yeah. Do you like the fries? You got mm -hmm. the garlic herb fries. Garlic herb fries are fire. Okay, perfect. And then whatever spices they have put on these French fries elevates them. Because, like, I love fries. I'm mm. a fry girl by nature. We're going to have to do a, an episode in Rembrandt's. Yes. Like, we need to we'll go. We need to, take, we need to take the cameras. On oh, the road. And go, go hang out. Yeah, they because. A pretty good menu, though, too. They had, um like, a Reuben sandwich that sounded divine. They have a prime rib. They have an advertisement for it in oh, the cool. bathroom. Because I last time I went there, I was like, they have a prime rib. It's like Thursday or Friday night. Yeah. So we have to go whenever there's the steak because I want the steak. Yes. That, yeah. Mm, It'd good, be great. It'd be good great. Good steak. And then yeah. um, they have this, I know, and it sounds silly, avocado toast. But I love a good avocado toast. I love a good protein. And then they put their like pickled mm. jalapenos, not jalapenos, um, their pickled- uh, It's like onions or something. Red onions. Yeah, 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 yeah. With these tomatoes. Yeah. Oh, it looks so good. Yeah. Speaking of pickled jalapenos- um. Are you familiar with the uh, sweet jalapenos from Trader Joe's? Mm -mm. Oh, they are so 
good. Yeah, they're and they're sweet. Like they're sweet and hot. Right. Um, so they're not too spicy, but the flavor. Like you get a taco, just drop those bad boys on. All right. So what's up with this kefir? This is the water kefir so drink that is... you were mentioning about last week. Yeah. Right? So you were teasing me about um, you know, the time on my hands. Yes. Oh my god. Ready? All right, so are these, these are freshly fermented? These are freshly fermented. All right, here we go, the whiskey I'm going to hold it down. For... It's all Because I'm not going to make a mess in I here. I have paper towels <laughs> outside. It's okay. Ah, it's perfectly carbonated, though, which makes my heart oh super my happy. Here, let me get you a. You want to grab me a. Here, I'll get A tissue. Just something. Tissue for my issue? Yeah, there you go. All right. Get it. There so this go. is um, one of my kids' favorites. It's a cranberry lime. I made mm. the cranberry uh, juice myself this last November. Um, I'm what? so sorry, Matt. What did the carbonation? Like what? This podcast is brought to you by Christina Mitchell with Bowsher Real Estate. I personally used Christina when I was moving up here to Idaho, and I've used her multiple times since. She is absolutely fantastic. She loves the West Data School District. If you're looking for somebody who's an area expert and really is invested in the community, I highly recommend you call Christina Mitchell with Bowsher Real Estate. So the water kefir itself. So mm. the water kefir grain ferments and the bacteria, the good bacteria that help your gut, like probiotics, oh, yeah, prebiotics, yeah. that eats at the sugar from it and mm. it <laughs> and it farts in all those little carbonation bubbles are the that's bacteria all, that's farts. That's like a million little farts right there. Oh okay. my gosh. I'm sorry, Matt, if just I make go, a mess. Just go, just do it. Yay. I'm really hoping I like this because I want to like homemade fermented stuff, but the world of homemade kombucha just soured me. <gasps> Don't even. My mom popped a bottle that I made a couple weeks ago. She had it chilling in the back fridge, and she called me just to tell me. She's like, Brandy, this blackberry lime that you did was Listen, so good. I was training – when I was training jiu-jitsu at Caesar, uh, Caesar Gracie's place in Pleasant Hill, there was this gal who actually made it to the UFC. Oh, Cheers. God bless you, woman. All right. That's damn good. That's really good. And really chilled straight out of the fridge is the best you can get it. It has a very um wait, like cut the crap. How much sugar is in this? Cause this is really good. I always get scared when something tastes good. It has this batch specifically had about half a tablespoon added to the bottle, but the bacteria eats it. So it's not that so, much. So no, the water kefir itself has molasses and organic cane sugar because I refuse to use anything else. It has Celtic sea salt. So it actually has minerals and vitamins in it that your body actually needs. Okay, vitamins is probably pushing it. Minerals is correct because Celtic sea salt naturally has 82 minerals. Can we get this on every show we do together? Can oh, we just have like We just a need to pick a bottle? flavor. Yeah, we'll pick our new flavor for That's the week. That's fantastic. Our we're, favorite is lemon We're going to drink both lime. of these bottles. Yes, we are. Yeah, you were telling me that last week. Mm -hmm. um, oh, anyway, so Leslie Smith was yes. this gal who uh, made it to the UFC. She was training out of Caesars gym when I was there and I became friends with her. She was super cool and she would make her own kombucha and she'd bring these, you know, boxes of kombucha bottles and yeah. the bottles were very similar to yeah. this, very nice and she was like selling it. She's fighting oh. a lot and trying to, you know, uh, make, make a living Right. You know, just try to survive. And she was working her ass off. She actually was noted uh, on several Rogan episodes because she was so damn tough. She was in a UFC fight. Her ear got ripped off. It was like half off. And she's like, can't you just tape it and let me keep going? She was so damn tough. She's a monster. Anyhow. Wow. So, yeah. So she would bring this kombucha. She's like, oh, do you want to get some kombucha? I'm like, I want to want it, but it tastes like horse piss. Mm-mm. <laughs> It's so bad. Most homemade kombuchas, you know what I think it's like? I think it's similar to when people make their own wine. Occasionally, you'll find somebody who makes their own wine from their own grapes. Right. And like, okay, wow, you know what you're doing. Most people make vinegar and then just choke it down like, oh, this is so good. <laughs> it's the worst. I needed that visual yeah, with the right. drink in your mouth, though. Thank you. That was so it is. satisfying. It is. Stop with the homemade stuff. Uh -uh. Like, just, Never. like, you do a good job, but like... Most people don't. And that's my criticism. Most people are going to screw this up. And so just leave it to the professionals. I'm like you. I'm going to have to bring you. You know what? I appreciate the fact that you put me and professional yes. in the same sentence. That was very kind of you. I just, I feel like you haven't had the right kombucha then. So did she do a secondary ferment on it? Did she do, like the first ferment is always going to taste like kombucha. Brandy, you're proving my point. <laughs> There's a very select group of people that should be tolerated when making kombucha. <laughs> the rest of the people are just hacks. 
I, they're dirty no. hacks making trash drinks. That's so sad because yes. that's a lot of energy and effort to not have something like a good product at the end of the day. Listen, listen. I have a hippie sister. All right. She lives in the woods. She's very hairy. Okay. And she came to a <laughs> she came to a phase in her life where she listen to me. This is reality. This is Matt's life. Where okay. she was like, I'm an artist. I'm like, okay, well, I'm a cow on the moon. I don't know what to tell you. And she's like, I'm an artist. And <laughs> She was also surrounded by a lot of people that loved complimenting each other. That was their goal. Their goal was not like if I came in and I was like, what do you think of my new dumb haircut? I feel like especially off air, you'd be like, OK, I love that you tried. It's a little bit dumb, right? Like, here's the problem. Something in my teeth. My baby's ugly. Well, you get it. I don't. My point I is. Don't I can't really lie. So I feel like you'd always get the truth out of me. Yeah. In right. that case. I don't think you'd do good. But the point is she puts this piece of trash art. And when I mean trash, I mean she literally used trash like bottles and stuff like plastic bottles in this, you know, tablecloth and some other thing. She puts a picture of it on her Facebook page, which everyone's like, oh, my God, you're so talented. Oh, my God. So beautiful. Giving her all these just uh, uh, unrelenting false compliments. And of course, the the shoe drops when she says, Thank you. I've had such an incredible reception. This has been so great. And these are actually for sale. Crickets. Crickets. So look, not everyone's an artist. And certainly not everyone should be a professional artist. You could sell this. In fact, we should do a fundraiser for the chamber, like Brandy's Brews, <laughs> right? Because I would I'm buy this. It. I would absolutely buy this. It's very good. And uh, like I would be, feel good giving it to my kids, the whole bit. Yeah. But you're one person. And you're making like your own crema and stuff. Like you are not the average idiot who's trying to make kombucha. I'm also making croissants, sourdough croissants tonight. Mm. I'm, well, I'm starting my sourdough croissants. It's going to take a couple days, but that's a whole other conversation. How many day. times do you uh, fold those over? Because it's my understanding that in France, they do it like they fold it so many times that it's like 3,000 layers or something. They just keep weaving in butter and um, goodness. What you end up doing is you put the butter, you fold it over itself, and then you do a fold mm -hmm. or two. And then you got to put it back in the fridge because it's got to be as firm as firm can be because otherwise that butter starts spreading improperly. So right. as you're doing it, you're only able- Because you need to able... fold and beat the hell out of it. Yeah. Right. Tap it down, flatten it okay. out again, and then do it all over again. But the second it starts getting warm, you have to put it back in the fridge to do it. So ideally, I would be able to be folding it- once every hour or two yeah. as I'm home doing it, letting it proof do its thing because that sour is just going to get better and better over time. And then the hope is like Saturday morning, I have chocolate filled croissants. God bless I'm you. I'm so excited. Do you ever do the almond croissants with like the no. almond butter and whatnot in them? No. Oh, it's so good. Oh my gosh. A little taste of amaretto in there. Oh my oh, God. Oh, so you're thinking more like an almond extract in it. Or like I don't know an what almond it is. paste. Yeah. Like it's like I an thought almond, almond paste. butter and my mouth immediately was like. Because <laughs> every time I eat almond butter, my mouth is like dry and I'm like a cow trying to eat their like. This is not a good visual for anybody involved. I'm so sorry. <laughs> Nobody needed to see that ever. <laughs> Okay, shout out, by the way, to this homemade granola that they have. They have Greek yogurt and their own, like, little sauces. Like, this is honey, and there's, like, a berry sauce, oh, and yeah. then fresh berries. Oh, it is so good. I love a good granola, though. My neighbor for Christmas, she made me granola. Really? She did. She brought me a big jar, and she's like, here. And and then, um, so we have this running joke, and I eat everything out of this one mug. And I was devastated when my mug broke. It is no, I'm. I kid you not, Matt. It was big enough that I would put my Chinese food in it, and I was eating noodles out of it, and I was eating pasta out of it, and I was I was drinking my coffee out of it. So it was like my my like nobody touched mom's mug. She eats everything out of it, and she will perish otherwise. So when it broke for Christmas, she bought me this cute pink mug that was even wider so that way I could always make sure that I could fit a full meal in my in my mug and so she wanted me to be able to have granola in my mug and all the fun things and oh my God, yeah that's, what was the mug was it like it's a, just it's just this really cool big it, so deep it's, it's not mug. like a, think Gilmore girls like Lorelai Gilmore okay. drinking coffee out of a bowl I've never seen Gilmore girls I have no idea what you're talking about 
I I'm sorry. Never I'm sorry. I've hurt never in my life. had to apologize for having a life. I don't know what to tell you. I don't know what to tell you. I'm not. If you want to talk like a life, any pop culture, I don't. I don't understand. This is from like 1999. Listen to me. I was a senior in high school in 1999. Oh, don't tell me that because I was not a senior in high school. You think that I would have been watching Gilmore Girls? What I do find funny when we say the name girls is Mean Girls, right, with Lindsay Lohan. And it was so funny to me, her progression as an actress and a public person. Yeah. Because when she did Mean Girls, she was still like – she was like the ma- freckled Marilyn Monroe of the teenage world. She like was. she was a little bit, she was not like super skinny, right? That was the whole yeah. point of Mean Girls. She was like a Normal. full figure, freckled skin, the whole thing. Mm-hmm. And like- Authentic I, person. Yeah. I was like, as a 22 year old, I was like, yes, you are awesome. 2004, I was like, Lindsay Lohan, you have my ticket. And she does Mean Girls. And I know Mean Girls because I had to take one of my first tutoring clients to Mean Girls, right? My first one, my first tutoring client was this- uh, family. The parents were 50 and 60 when they adopted this girl from China. They were both Chinese and they had were like savage business people and they had done really well and then had this daughter, right? Got okay. this daughter, adopted her from China. And th- the problem was by the time I rolled around, I was tutoring around like math and stuff. They were squarely in their 60s and 70s and they were like, can you take Nadine to the movies? I was like, I mean- yeah, can you pay me like my tutoring rate? And they're like, yeah, we'll pay you anything. Just take her to the movies. So I started, I was like a manny. So I started taking around this girl and her friends to like mean girls or to like dinner or to like do whatever. I'm like take her to the swim pool. N- no big deal. And I was like, I mean, okay. So and here I'm spending my afternoons at like this babysitting <laughs> at this, ri- but they were like seventh grade, eighth grade by this time. Yeah. So I was like, Okay, whatever. They're like 13. Like, yeah, I'll just I'll go hang out at the swim club with them, I guess. And then I'll like take him to a movie after because they had nothing, nothing else. And the girl, I guess she was such a pain, but I guess she liked working with me anyway. So the point is, I go to I go to Mean Girls and Lindsay Lohan following that movie becomes a real life Mean Girl. She starts hanging out with uh, wasn't Nicole Richie and some other people that were like, they were the spitting image of the nightmare before Christmas, but in real life. Oh my gosh. They, they <laughs> was were, a visual like, I never needed. <gasps> skeleton, like skin and bone skexies from like the, uh, do you remember the dark crystal, the skexies? Like, ah, and they were ah, ah, get out of their cars. And all of a sudden they were doing blow and insanity. And then she ended up in rehab. I, I know the rehab part, but the part before that, I have no idea. This is 100% what, true. It must be. This is 100% I mean, true. She went from being like my heart throb, like you are a healthy, very attractive, like girl next door mm-hmm. to like, oh my God, wipe off your nose. Oh and gosh. like lost that. You know what? Pounds. She's living her best life now in Greece. Is she? In Greece, I believe. What? I know. I had no idea. She, there's a video of her partying in like Mykonos or somewhere. That's great. It, but you know what? I believe now she's had a, a child. Whether it's adoption or, you know, via herself. That was a via weird. Via herself. <laughs> I don't know how to put that other one. Like the thing. The thing. <laughs> via herself. <laughs> Coast with Brandy. <laughs> You're welcome, Matt. <laughs> so God. I just saw a picture of her. I don't know why that's so like, funny. Adopting her <laughs> via herself. <laughs> I hope it was herself. <laughs> I mean, because I want to believe she would be a responsible mom and get like I prenatal think her life care just and like shifted. She went through these phases, and and that big Nickelodeon, um, that whole thing came out. You saw? No, I'm not familiar. Okay, so there is there's been talk of the the childhood abuse and the things of the kid actors and all of. Oh yeah, things, like right? Macaulay Culkin and whatnot. Yes, yeah. Um, so I, I'm not saying he was necessarily abused, but the childhood actors, like he's the classic he example of somebody iconic. who's like. Never, Absolutely. he never really recovered yeah. from his role in Home Alone. He had My Girl. Yeah. He had Home Alone and too. He has, he has a beautiful wife and a baby and he just got Does his he? star. Um, Brenda Brenda Wong, she was on Disney Channel. She oh, was right. a big star. Yeah, Takes cute one little boy. That one. You but go. you know what? They grew up in the same realm. So yeah, there's an right. understanding. You need somebody who understands your pain. Totally. Well, and finding out now when this like docuseries came out about what really was going on behind the scenes, um, you really have a better take on like Amanda Bynes and what she probably went through and uh, Lindsay Lohan and what she probably went through and the psychological abuse that these girls would have had women, girls, boys, everybody in that industry oh, went through. So to, I hope for her 
sake, that this is like her way of coming full circle. She's now getting the life that she never had. She has this kid now that she gets to, you know, be a part of their life because she's making good choices. So I always hope that for all of them, that, that, you know, they get out of that business and they have this healthy, wonderful life. Yeah, there was a South Park did a really funny spoof when Britney Spears was having one of her meltdowns. Very upsetting. Oh, but this was years yes. and years ago. So it's like yeah, got to be 2005. Alone. Oh, my God. Right. And South Park had this angle on. Do you remember the the short story, The Lottery? Mm-mm. It was is something you would have read in middle school or elementary school, but essentially the lottery is this. I was in private school during middle school. I don't think I would have read that. Well, it, okay, maybe, maybe, maybe not. Like, but the lottery was uh, it, the basis of the lottery was that you have this agri- agri- um, agrarian community that believes to some degree in fate or sacrifice or something like that. So they sacrifice somebody every year for like this harvest that you don't and you don't understand like nobody really makes it clear about why they're doing this but everybody's like oh it's for the harvest it's for the they're like but how for the harvest like well it's for the harvest and of course the the story is uh story develops and somebody gets picked and they're like okay but why like i know i've been saying we need to do this but why and nobody comes around to it so south park does this spoof on it where it's like these farmers and they're like we have to sacrifice Brittany, and they're like but why (laughs) Right, that was, the, the, the they, harvest. Yeah, it was. I think they even say that, right? And How funny. It, yeah, it's really interesting. And again, as a younger person, I was kind of like, eh, I don't. But now that I've seen the cycles go through over and over and over, it's like calling it the lottery is actually really a stupid point because it's freak luck mm-hmm. that Macaulay Culkin took off, right? It's freak luck that mm-hmm. you know Lindsay Lohan or you know Hannah Montana, yeah. and, like all this stuff. That it takes off when you consider the number of people that are vying for those limited spots and just everything that has to fall in place to make you it happen. You mean like baby Brandy? Baby Brandy. I'm going to bring in the headshots next episode to you show you. Baby Brandy. I was I auditioned for Kraft Cheese commercials, the whole nine yards. There oh, yeah. There you go. I, get, like, I understand there that realm. Go. And it is crazy. And when right. you think about the probability of you becoming famous or anybody right. is – decimal point oh like, it's tiny tiny and when it happens it's not good it's not good <laughs> unfortunately it usually is not like it's not anywhere close to good mm-hmm. you become this drug like the 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 rate of people like how many people do you know that have had real fame besides matthew mcconaughey and like kept it because we all just happen to know matthew mcconaughey of course i heard him i actually again on a rogan which i i loved i listened to his interview and he was talking about how he he had this very interesting very interesting rise to stardom because it was essentially his first movie hit i think it was called a time to die and he was this attorney this young guy and he crushed it i remember seeing that movie and it was really well done i think uh, matt damon was in it as well again mm-hmm. doesn't matter but the point is, he was like, look, I went from, these were his words, he's like, I went from walking through a town square and 99 people have no idea who I am and one person recognizes me, but they think I'm their like cousin or something and I'm not, to 99 people know me and want to talk to me and like one person doesn't, but just because they haven't seen me, <laughs> right? How and crazy. He, right. And he's this young guy, I think he was like 23. And he said that he actually left because he started like freaking out about it. He left town, went out and by himself stayed somewhere for a few days, like a week or something. And then just he uh, the way he put it, he's like, look, I just at the end of the time, I'm like, look, you're the only person I can't get rid of because you're me. I'm going to shake hands with myself, accept myself for who I am and like move on and like come back to society. And that was his rise to stardom and finding a spiritual place to grow in this industry without losing his damn mind. It's like he's great. I feel like that's something, though, you can take from his journey and pretty much apply it to anybody that has to uproot anything in their life. Like whenever we made decisions to move here, we had to sit down and go, okay, I'm going to be okay with this. I'm going to have people that don't agree with my choices. I'm going to have people that openly will tell me they don't agree with it. Right. But they would never take this, you know, direction themselves. Right. And you make yourself up from nothing all over again. But you have to be okay with it and you have to be willing to put in that energy and effort and work right. and acceptance of yourself through that all of those kinds of changes. Right. So, but I mean, how do you accept yourself when you're not Matthew McConaughey? 
And what I mean by that is he. I don't know. He, I, he, I do a pretty good job of looking in the mirror and being like, hey, Brandy. Hey, Brandy. <laughs> <laughs> you don't wake no, up and do that in the morning. You're not I mean, like, I hey, do, Matt. I do. I do. But what I think it's. I think there's a lot of like okay, beauty not, in okay. like I went on a yoga retreat and you know like sat with the gurus and like found peace. Ate bad and, mushrooms. And it's like okay, great. I'm glad you did that. Try finding that level of peace when you're in gridlock traffic with a screaming kid in the back and like a husband who's blowing your phone up about dinner being made. Now I've never had a husband, but I do know that I've never had my husband ask me what to cook for dinner. I'm sure your husband has not. But like, there's this. I read an article that was making this point years ago, which is like, look, I'm glad you found peace under the best possible circumstances. Because by the way, if you can't find peace in the middle of the woods when you're like meditating and you know sniffing your own armpit, like I don't know what to tell you. You can't find peace. The real trick for the rest of us is that we're wholly incomplete. We're woefully lacking in a number of areas and the chaos around us doesn't stop. And we're supposed to like find peace though. Like that's a really hard thing to do. So, you know, yeah, it's one thing to say like, oh my God, I just had this hit movie and I have this incredible acting career in front of me. Let me go out into the woods and shake hands with myself versus being me and being like, you're good enough, Matt. Well, (laughs) no, I don't think so. (laughs) (laughs) Matt. You are good enough. I can't even eat gluten, Brandy. I'm not. I can't eat egg. Like, let's be real here. We all have flaws. I feel like, we, okay, we talked about this whole thing. You asked if I had, you know, struggled moving here. And did I find, was I just grateful and excited or was there a struggle, right? I feel like that's just something that going through that big process and shift and change of moving and, and moving independently with my husband, not with us for those that long of a time. It was such a wonderful blessing to have him back at home. But I had gone through so many emotions and grown so much as a person that I could be okay. And I think for me, it was, you're going to wake up and you're going to be grateful because you woke up this morning and you have another shot at another day. And you can do something crazy different or you can do the same thing, but the choice is yours. So I think that's where I find peace is I know that every day I get a choice. How I use it is fully to my advantage. There was one gal that talked about if you ever have a really bad day where you're struggling, everything's imploding, you just feel like life is difficult, stop and quit everything in your head. Take take 20 seconds, close your eyes, quit everybody. Quit your husband, quit your kids, quit your house, quit your mortgage, quit your job, quit everything and walk away from it in your head. Okay, what are things that you can't live without? And I did this. And I go, okay, I can't live without my kids because I would be I would be devastated. Yeah, can't, can't. I can't. They're not an option. Cool. My kids are back. I can't I don't want to choose my not having my husband in my life. I choose him today. I can't not choose a home for all of us to live in. Like I'm not just going to go and move away from this home. Right. So I choose my home. So I got to pick what got put back on my plate. And the power in being able to pick and choose what you have and what you let slide, like I don't do laundry every day because that's not going to be where I put my time, energy, and resources. Do my kids have clean clothes every day? Absolutely. Is my house an absolute mess every day? No. But I'm choosing where my energy gets put and I have gratitude that I can do that. And I just, that's where I find peace. So Matt, you are enough and Mm. you can choose peace today. Sorry, that's my motivational talk no, for the day. No, I – listen, I appreciate that a lot. I, I absolutely do. And I actually ran – when when students that I had would complain about going to school or doing things, similar to you, I'm like, all right, look, if you if you didn't exist right now in your current iteration and you had to – you were like floating around in space and you're like, all right, look, you got 100 years. You got to fill out the 100 years. Okay, so you plan your life. And – they would go back through. It's like, okay, well, the first few years you want to just develop into something other than a blob, right? And it's like, but if, if you want your last few years to be relaxed, fine. You want your first few years to be, you know, okay, because you're a little kid. But where would you put the hard work, right? And they were like, well, I'd probably get it out of the way. It's like, that's right. You would front load your life with all of the things that would lead to ease later in life and success and competence. So like from about age five or six, you'd probably crush yourself intentionally until 25. So it's just 19 of your 100 years. And if you take a step back and you're like, all right, 19 out of 100, that's not that bad, especially if you get it out of the way early, right? And then you have everything you need to work through it the rest of your years. 
And you work back through that with students. And a lot of times they'll be like, yeah, that's exactly what I want. I'm like, great. You're getting your best case scenario. This is your life. Mm -hmm. And yeah, it's going to be hard because you up in the air would be like, dude, load it on. Make it as hard as I can possibly handle. Mm -hmm. I don't want to like be pathetic about it. You know, so I I agree with you. It's I, I very much view the things I'm doing in that vein of, hey, look, if you had to design your perfect life, mm -hmm. you're pretty damn close. And like, yeah, mm -hmm. you get tired and yeah, you get frustrated. But like you have, wh what do you want to take out? And, and if you can't take it out, then don't say you want to take it out. Mm -hmm. And if you can take it out, then go ahead and do it. Yeah. Right? Like, that's it. It's making those Just choices. Quit it all, Brandy. <laughs> Just quit it all. No, Matt. I can't quit it all. Well, I all the stuff you don't like. Well, but here's the thing. There are lessons Did you actually drop anything from that when you were like, I'm going to quit? It everything. was the laundry. It literally mm -hmm. became the laundry. It became... I've set an expectation that all my laundry has to get done every day. The beds have to be made every day. The kitchen has to be tidy and clean. And I was setting unrealistic, unrealistic expectations on what my time looked like because I had set a standard for myself that was unattainable for anybody, even the most perfect version of Brandy. And allowing myself to be human – and picking and choosing the things that were going to fuel my life, bring me joy, fuel my children's lives, that became the priority. And everything falls into place from there. Because when they're happy and healthy, mom has time to now go and do the dishes in the kitchen. When they're playing contently because they've gotten the time and attention from me they need, we finish our schoolwork, we do our thing, they're relaxing, now I can go do the laundry. It just, it took making the priorities in my life that needed to be priority, the thing that I focused my time and attention on. That makes sense. I know. It makes Crazy, sense. right? It so yes, I did I did drop the laundry. Good. Good. But I also started did you drop taking any... up taking up all of this stuff in the meantime. <laughs> did as well. you drop any crappy friends? No, because I always have a really small group of friends. Mm. I'm always very tight knit nice. just because we my time and attention goes really primarily to my family. Yeah, right. And my friends who are my true friends know that. And like I have two really good girlfriends, my friend Nicole and my friend Meg. And they are ride or die wonderful women, strong, strong women, wonderful, both super um, productive in the community. They right. run businesses. like Contributors. They're, they're totally, they're wonderful. And they're super human beings. They're just amazing. So when we reconnect, it is like no time has passed. We jump right back into where we are. But we also have a respect level for one another's lives and like where they're at in their phase of life and where I'm at. And we'll go six, seven, eight months without seeing each other. And then cool, you guys available in a couple of weeks? Yep, let's set a time and we reconnect. And then it's like our cups are refilled and we go back to living our lives, supporting each other from the sidelines. I just, I don't ever really have like a friend drop off. Yeah, you don't have, because no. you don't carry extra fat. You're no. Not, you're not making a bunch of bad decisions that lead you to have like 10 extra pounds to drop off. No. And I am pretty reserved about who I share my life with um, just because, you know, I want to know that the people that I surround myself with are going to be good to my kids and good to my family. Sure, and yeah. be, if we're sharing time, we need to be motivating to one another. We need, you know, if I'm a sinking ship, I'm going to bring down whoever I'm with. But and if they're a sinking ship, they're going to do the same thing to us. So right. if you're dealing with bad things, that that follows, and that you know you are who you the company you keep, right? He, and, okay, I have a client, a, a podcast client. He's awesome. Okay, he, he's like, he's the most principled, savage man I've ever met, and he's great. Like when I say savage, I don't mean he's mean or rude or anything, but he has this real distinct principled character that that he cuts people out left and right he was telling me he came in here he's like <clears throat> this old guy this guy he he had a he's had a, a myriad of businesses chiropractic office things like that and he said i had to cut i had to fire my bookkeeper recently I was like your bookkeeper what did he like embezzle you he's like no he's making bad decisions I'm like like in the office like what what do you mean it turns out he's like no he keeps telling me about his financial problems, about his problems with like his family or something. Like he goes down this list of problems this guy has and how he's not addressing his problems or dealing with them or keeps making excuses. And he's like, I can't have that in my life. And I'm like, wait a minute. Is he doing a good job with your books? And he's like, well, yeah, but he's not somebody I can be around. 
like what a salve and again this has worked out for this guy right like well, he he's very successful professionally he has wonderful kids he's i lo- I, I very much respect him and i have a pretty good sniffer when it comes to people i'm like yeah. okay you're the real deal like you're not you're not saying this for like an instagram post Totally. This is real. Yeah. Like this you is who live, you are. You're authentic. You live this code with I cannot fill my life and my time with people that are going to be pulling away from me. I right. have to fill my time with people where I'm like, I need to improve myself being around him. Right. Or they being make around you the her. best versions of yourself. Yeah. They make you feel like you want to be even better mm-hmm. than the best version of yourself. Yep. Like they that, encourage you. Yeah. Just by their presence. Like mm-hmm. I've I've had the good fortune of having people in on the podcast. Like Man, one was uh, Dr. John Condy, this pediatric neurologist. Mm -hmm. He left. And I was like, oh, my God, I am a pathetic (laughs) human being. (laughs) Like, for a week, I couldn't get over it. I was like, I can't believe I just talked to this guy. And the things he said on and off, I was like, my mind is blowing. Like, how is this possible? Like, you're such a great guy. Had this gallon yesterday. Oh, my God. Foster and heart. Look it up. Okay. This gal comes in, somebody somebody puts me in contact with them. Like, hey, I'd really love it if you had Foster and Heart on. I'm like, okay, whatever. Turns out it's a foster care organization. Like, I don't know anything about your organization, but I have seven adopted siblings and they were foster cared from my dad for some time and he's a foster cared other people. Like, I believe in this mission. Right. Come on in. She comes in and I sit down with her and I'm like, okay, like, I don't know. I don't know what you do. And I intentionally avoid doing research because there there's an aspect of presumptuousness that I fall into where it's like, oh, I think I know what's valuable in your in your life experience. It's like, no, I don't know anything about you. And the more I try to find out beforehand, the more I change my – I should be a blank slate. Just go. Just right. tell me whatever. So she goes ahead and does indeed tell me. Here she is at some point. I think it was 2018. She was a youth pastor, a single woman living in a two-bedroom townhouse on the North End. And has always had a soft spot in her heart for foster kids and just decides she's like, fuck it, I'm just going to whatever. So she starts hosting these, not children, but hosting meetings where like a, a social worker or something would come and help foster parents and they'd like interact and she'd host the meeting and facilitate. She starts meeting people in the foster care world. And then finally at the end of the year, she's like, okay, I'm going to do it. Like, I don't have a big house. I don't have a husband, but like, I'm going to do it. So she signs up to be a foster parent. She gets a foster kid. They call her, she's at work. And she's like, oh my God, oh my God, I got to go. Right, right. She gets this call. She runs home and changes. She's like, I got to look just right, like all this stuff. And she's driving. She's like, I'm super nervous. Like, this is an incredible thing. She's been waiting, waiting. So she goes and she arrives at at the location at the like foster center, whatever it is, the location where she's going to meet her daughter. And as she pulls up, the uh, this other van pulls up with the kid in it, right? So she gets out. And she's like, oh, my gosh. And all these kids start filtering out of the van. She's talking to the lady. She's like, wait, which one's mine? And they're like, that one. And she loses. She's like, oh, my God. So excited. And I think the daughter was like two or four, just this little super curly hair girl. And so, she's so excited. She's like, yeah. I got you, kid. Like, I got you. Come on. Let's go. Turns out there were four kids in the van and they were siblings. I and didn't know she, you can't tell me that. <sighs> yeah. So she she's like, here I'm so elated and ready and to like she's, help. She's mis- and as she's siblings. driving away, she sees these other kids that are also driving away in other cars, and all the siblings are like, and it's over. Like they're gone. Oh. So she gets home and she's like, what? Like, and again, one yeah. she's doing a great job with this kid. So she reaches out to the to the foster care organization. She's like, get me the other kids. So all of a sudden it's like she has one kid, then she has two kids, and then she gets the third sibling, and then the fourth sibling. And 3 months after that, the the mom something else happened to the dad, but the mom was pregnant at the time, has a fifth kid. She gets the fifth kid. She is a single woman living in a two bedroom house. And loving she converts, on all those babies. Loving on all of them. She converts her master bedroom into like a dorm area. Mm-hmm. All five siblings are together. It's wild. So she does this and then she goes and asks at some meeting with one of the foster workers, social workers. She's like, hey, why – like is there a home for for like siblings so they don't get split up? And he's like, no, there's not. She's like, well, why, why isn't that? And this little bit of parent is like, why don't you make it? Like dead stop. And she's wow. like, why don't I fucking make it? 
And she, and in the end of, at the beginning of 2020, it was like January 2020, she starts getting a hold of the state like, hey, I'm going to make a large scale housing accommodation for oh. groups of foster siblings so they are not separated. It will be moderate durations or short to moderate. So like up to like 90 days or, or 120 days, yeah. something like that, before they get placed with a larger family that can accommodate all of them. So these kids are not separated. Yeah. Three years later, at the end of 22, she opens her first house. So here's this woman who out of nowhere was like wow. in 2018, 2019, was like, I got to do this. She has no like spousal support. It's not like she's got some six bedroom house. And she just makes it happen. Now she has a staff of 32. Mm -hmm. Now, mind you, she didn't even open her first place until the end of 22. Here we are at the beginning of 24. She has a staff of 32. Let that sink into your head for a second wow. and just revel in the horror of how pathetic you and I are in comparison to this woman. Like, I want oh, to hug her. I wanted to hug her too, but she's a single lady with five kids and I had just met her. I'm like, I'm not going to hug you. <laughs> but... but <laughs> I don't know. I don't want people to get the wrong idea, you know, but like I was so taken I'll hug by her this. for you. Please do. Oh and I gosh. even asked her, I, I was like, I kind of feel bad asking, but like, where do you get the balls to do this? Like, how did you do this? Mm -hmm. It seems impossible that you just raised your hand. You're like, I'm the answer. I'm the answer for these kids. And she is. It's the, the ability to meet these people yeah. and talk to them. Like, I feel so pathetic on a regular basis. It's laughable. Oh, no. I, I know the feeling. Every time we have a new member, I'm like, you do what? Your background's in what? Right. You've met who? who? And these like, and I get this crazy opportunity to just be a fly on the wall and get to watch them be wonderful and amazing and, you know, obviously support wherever I can. But like, I totally get that. Because sometimes you're like, I'm just over here doing my thing and you're making waves in the world. And you are doing important things and cool things. And it's What just... about the businesses that made it through COVID? Like Rembrandts and stuff. Oh. They're just like, you know what kind of grit that took? Yes. But you know what? They are- Shout out Rembrandts. Shout out Rembrandts. Seriously. This is uh, an amazing that meal. That burger really good. Oh, I have oh. not stopped eating yeah, yeah. these loaded fries. Oh, by the way, yes. uh, for viewers of the show and of this episode, uh, follow us on Facebook- no, sorry, not Facebook. Follow us on Instagram. Like the post that this is in. Share it. Comment. And you're going to be entered in to win a $50 Rembrandt's gift card. So Boom, shout out girl. Rembrandt's Boom. for this awesome opportunity. So uh, make sure you guys are following. Like, reshare, comment, and be entered in to win this awesome $50 gift card. You did a great job with that. Oh, well done. Well, thank you. I've practiced can many times entered, in the. Can mirror. I be entered myself into the uh, into the? I, I think you're. It's a little null and void if you are, but you know, oh, I'll let all man. your viewers. I'll participate. Right. I'll like and share my own. Post. Yeah, you're like I'll comment. I'm on already it. following. I love it. Perfect. And you're following the chamber too. So I am. You're already entered to win on both ends of there. Um, <laughs> can I we try your next drink? Oh, go for it. It's the same one. It's the same. Oh, match. great. Let me just get yeah. a refill then. God. Go for it. Um, this is great stuff. I know. I asked you last time. Do you golf? No, I don't golf. I can't golf. Do you have I don't have time golf? to stand around and think about working out. <laughs> I mean, prove me wrong. I, you, I don't know how you have enough time to sit down and have a meal with me at any given time. Well, this is so. work too, so we're fine. Actually, right. Okay, so even though you don't golf, I'm sure you have friends I'm actually that listening golf. to an audiobook right now. I just... <laughs> <You're t> <laughs> Am I that boring, Matt? I can't do anyone. <laughs> You're like, I can't deal with Brittany today. No, I just, the the idea that I would have five or six hours to go out and just stand around, most likely drink, be bad at something, be annoyed by the fact I'm bad at something and not get a workout. Like I just come home a worse person four times over. Really? Do you golf? I don't. But well, okay. then why are so, you surprised by this? No, because, okay, so I If went, you were like the female Tiger Woods, I could understand. You don't even golf yourself. Don't trash I, on me. I don't. I didn't trash on you. Oh, pretty close. I did not necessarily trash on you. Give me a break, Okay, man. so we, When's the last time you saw a jacked golfer? They're marginally better than bowlers. I, I have to say that there has to be some sort of skill level for you to hit a tiny ball, it, like propel it and have it like launch i am not coordinated so to watch people golf is pretty impressive to me personally listen you ever seen curling in the winter olympics that shit's hard i don't care about it though 
<laughs> I don't care. Aside from just watching it and yelling at my TV and the Winter Olympics, which we do with every sport, every sport. I mean, like you like watching the trampoline. I love watching the trampoline, the summer Olympics that the trampoline lady for Canada led their parade through the opening ceremony. What trampoline are you talking about? Are you talking about the gymnast? Are you unfamiliar with the trampoline event at the Olympics? There's a trampoline event. I don't watch the Olympics. That's probably that's your problem. There's a trampoline event. <laughs> the the trampolinist from Canada won gold in like 2000. What did they do on the 16? trampoline? Oh, a lot of stuff. A lot of flips. A lot of flips. I'm not making like, this up. This is real. Like it is. Is it? Are you talking like their floor routine as gymnasts, or is this like no, a no, specific you don't trampoline? Understand. They're jumping like two stories high. No. I'm pulling something up right now. No. This is happening right now. I'm telling you right now. It's it's the most ridiculous thing ever. Okay, so here's I'm gonna I'm gonna come back to you with is there not a PGA tour? Oh my gosh, I forgot to tell you. Okay, Matt. Oh my gosh, the most amazing thing ever happened. Go, 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 go. Okay. Um, so we have a Boise Open that comes here. It's a golf tour that comes through Boise, goes to their golf course up in the hills. Okay. Every year, they do a concert series mm. at the end of each night. Hell yeah. I am so excited. Daryl Hall is going to be there and perform. I don't know about you. I love Hall & Oates personally, but that's just... I love Holland's Bites and Brews. <laughs> yes. Oh, my gosh. Speaking of her, she's amazing. I Every time I see her menu pop up, I'm like, where are you at today? Where are you at today? Can I stalk where can I you? Find you? Where can I get more lavender latte? Okay. Look. The trampoline event at the Olympics. I have never seen this a day in my life. This is a thing. So does it take a lot of skill to do that? Yeah. It takes a lot of skill to play snooker and darts and all kinds of things. Why we love golf is beyond me. Besides the fact that you're essentially driving like jet skis across grass when you get in those stupid golf carts. Like they take more damage than the than the destruction derby cars. Demolition derby. I giggle mainly because they allowed me to drive one around. Okay, so our chamber has our golf tournament coming up. Okay. Which is why I ask because I'm like, if you're a golfer, we need to get you there. Oh, yeah. yeah. Wait, obviously. Wait, what are the deets? Okay, so uh, May 17th. It's a Friday I will be there. We will, our whole staff will be there, obviously. Um, and we have our main sponsors, Valnova. They mm. were our sponsor last year. They love participating in things like this. Um, 25 roughly teams. And you just go and you're assigned which hole that you start at. And everybody rotates. And then everyone awesome. eats for lunch. There's raffle prizes. Everybody Go just has fun. And then they let me drive the golf cart around. <sighs> I've never in my life been on a golf course. I didn't understand golf courses. I feel like I'm in the in now and like I know what I'm doing this year. So last year, I just looked like the crazy lady going across things that I shouldn't have been. But like no one knows what they're doing and nobody cares. My only, oh, it was a blast though. My only experience with golf was obviously not like, oh my God, I'm honing this skill. Like I'm going to become great at this. It was my buddies when I moved here. I had never even attempted the golf besides like putt-putt golf, okay. like a miniature golf course. And they were like, oh, we're going to go golfing. You should come golfing. I'm like, well, I don't really have anything else to do today. So yeah. there we are at 8 a.m. taking fireball shots. I'm like, <laughs> what in the shit are we doing? <laughs> Bad choice number yeah, one. Check. Right. And then, of course, everything's really expensive. So I'm borrowing golf clubs that yeah. I proceed to dig up half of the course with. I have no idea what I'm doing. I lose. That's it had visual. to be... It had to be between twenty and thirty thousand golf balls in one day. No, I have no it's... idea. Like, and I would get a hold of it occasionally and like really ring the bell. And I was like, "Oh, that's cool." Led by another hour of like, oh, "I suck at life." See, I, I'm just, I'm not coordinated. I'm not terribly coordinated. Uh, not a bit. But like, I'm a good sports. athlete. I just not. I'm not that. I got on base one time playing softball, and that's because they hit me in the leg with the ball. <laughs> Do you realize what? They yelled somebody else to run. I threw my bat and I ran one time, and then I had to walk my way back to the home plate and continue to hit the ball or hit at the ball. Oh, my God. I am, No, Matt, it is, not, it is ugly. My children did not inherit any sort of sports from my husband or I. They got musicality. They can dance. Musicality? My husband played saxophone in yeah, high school. I've just never heard somebody say musicality. 
It's very nice. Thank you. you. Mean, like musical skill? Yeah. Like I, I love mean, for music? Well, they have an appreciation. Um, they both are like fanatics when it comes to choosing what is on the radio and who is on the radio at any given time. Huey Lewis is on the new. Huey Lewis and the news is typically what is requested in Weird Al Yankovic. So he, oh my gosh. That's quite a spread. It really is. He's quite diverse. Quite diverse. Eclectic. He, uh, we went to Guru the other day. Shout out to Guru. <laughs> Dude. I love them. Dude. I know. Guru Donuts. Okay. He told- Taking advantage of number one over here. Not, they didn't take any advantage. I bought all my donuts and all the No, goodies. you didn't. I did this They time. gave you a breakfast sandwich on a brioche bun? For the record, I paid for my son's breakfast sandwich this last week. and last I Last week? Th- that's besides the point. That's all. Oh anyway, whatever. Guru. Anyways, we went to Guru and their staff is super nice. And the guy behind the... Like the the check stand, I don't know what to call it at this point in time. <laughs> My son whispers, he goes, "Mom, he looks like Weird Al." The cash register? Yeah, the guy, the guy that's like you said the it check up. stand. I don't know what to call it. I panicked and I said, <laughs> <laughs> "I panicked." I got, My hands are sweating. I don't know what to do. I got all sweaty. I called it a check stand. <laughs> he he's like, "Mom, he looks like Weird Al," and I was like. Oh, Oh, you're right, dude. He goes like the guy in the movie version. So Daniel Radcliffe. Uh, so I went up to the dude and I'm like, hey, this please take this as the largest compliment ever. My son loves Weird Al. Like he said, you look just like him. And he goes, oh, that's very Monet. And I was like, oh, I'm glad you think so. And I proceeded to have to look up what Monet was. <laughs> because apparently I'm old. And... <laughs> Oh, I love your honesty. God bless you, woman. It's like, yes. yeah, man. Yeah, we're all just trying to get through I the day. I was like, oh, uh, yes. Okay. Uh-huh. Awesome. That's awesome. Cool. Awesome. Re- mm-hmm. The, this, this, Enjoy. <laughs> this mom was telling me that, or no, it was this, a student's mom. I really liked both of them. And the the mom or the daughter was giving the mom a hard time for like not understanding teen culture and she's like yeah dude if if you say uh, you know i went ham with you know my mom she'd literally be like oh yeah i went baloney <laughs> like, like she just didn't understand That's so cute. Right? and the mom's like yeah i don't know i try mm. yeah <laughs> my kids are always like or what, what was that saying um they're like cool beans i'm like hot rice and they're like that's not funny that's not that's not funny mom I'm sorry. Okay. I, I, okay. I had a moment this morning. I had a moment this morning. Okay. Yes. I, every day I get up at five. I come to the studio. I get a bunch of editing done. I go to jujitsu at Alliance. Shout out Alliance. Yes. They're members. Shout out. Shout, Shout out, out Alliance. Alliance. Shout out Alliance yeah. Jiu-Jitsu. And I go there and I train and then I go pick up my son and take him to middle school. Okay. Okay. So every day when I get him in the car, as we're leaving, pull, pulling out of the driveway. Okay. What's the agenda for today? Okay, I got banned. I got this. And he's like, what's your agenda? I'm like, okay, I'm interviewing this person or I'm doing this. And it's like, okay, this this is our little morning cool. constitution. Yeah. Yeah. So this morning he gets in the car. We're pulling it. I'm like, what uh, itinerary? I was like, what's uh, schedule? I was like, it's not schedule. I'm like, what's uh, what's your itinerary? And without missing a beat, I shit you not, half a second later, he's like, use your words. <laughs> He's 12. And I was like, use my words. That's a real word. That is a word. like, the thing word. you're doing, the, your agenda. And he's like, oh, yeah. And I was like, use your words, son of a bitch. Use your words, use dad. Your words. Or like if I, I sa- said, what's oh, the itinerary? Those kids, man. Let me tell you. <laughs> Oh, that yeah. was the first time ever in his entire 12 years. Like today was kind of a, a marked a time when like he made fun of me on point. Like it was perfect, perfectly timed. It was, it's not like, oh, you farted at. It was like, it was cognitively sufficient. Oh, I was yeah. like, you fucking got me. You like, got oh me. my God, this is the first time ever. I was wiping your butt like a year ago and now you're 12 and making fun of me. Yeah. And it's never going to end. No. My mom is kind of in that mode right now because she has me and then my brother and my sister is going to be 16. She had you via her. <laughs> I mean, technically, yes. Yeah. <laughs> Technically. <laughs> Rude. So she has you. She does. So we are all in this mode of like, we, we're we all at an age where we can joke with one another and we can joke about. And then she just gets really upset because we kind of all gang up on her at times. Because, I mean, she- You but, have to. Okay. So we gang up on her though. And my sister has- 
she's so intelligent and she's going to watch this episode. She's going to be so mad at me. She has a way with words where she um, gets in little conundrums. Um, so we were a whole like golf joke. We were saying something and she's like, oh, who do you think you are? Tiger Jones. And I go, you mean Tiger Woods? Uh, yeah, yeah, that one. And so she gets herself and she, gosh, I got to think of what the word was, but she was using some word and she just uses it so confidently that you almost have to stop and be like, that's not a thing. Is that a that's thing? A thing. That's a, but yeah, she gets her foot caught in her mouth all the time. And, but she thinks it's really uh, funny and she like will stand on these ledges. Um, I oh, said one she the called other me day. a plate. She's like, yeah, you're, you're a full plate. Or you're a meal. What was what's the whole <laughs> phrase? There was a phrase, and she's like, I have "Yeah, my plate full." No, no, like, like if, because I. That's a mouth. I made the joke that I said I'm like a happy meal. I I have sure. I'm a full meal with kids. Yeah. Like, they didn't think that was very funny. And then, or like the ladies are like, mm, "I'm a snack." I'm a snack. She, but she's like, "Well, you're a plate, Brandy," and I was like. That's not a thing. That's, That's not, not a, a thing. thing. We're not making a thing. You're not. But yeah. You're a Thanksgiving ramekin. I'm I'm a gravy boat. That's what I am. I'm a gravy I'd love boat. I love to be a gravy boat. I love if gravy. I had to if I had to pick, I actually make the gravy from scratch every Thanksgiving and I nail it every time. Do you? Yeah. Yeah. I just dump all the spices in. I have no idea what they are. All the things. The, I'm like, oh, all the things. <laughs> And so you're like, not doing a package of gravy, right? No, no, no. Okay, I'm literally good. taking like the fat oh, I and like, I'm sure you did. <laughs> no, but I take all the things and I'm like, I smell it. Yeah, 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 yeah. And then, oh, just, but like, like if there's, tenu- I've never smelled a spice that I didn't want to throw in. I'm like, oh. turmeric? Sure, whatever. Oh, like, turmeric goes on everything. Yeah, it does. But my wife's like, this kind of tastes like Indian gravy. Yeah. <laughs> like, like It's Indian tikka masala gravy. gravy. Yeah. Happy Thanksgiving, baby. <laughs> I love you. Oh my gosh. Okay. So have you heard of That was me talking to my wife, by the way. I didn't just say I love you. I'm just saying I was like I'm I'm joking with my wife. No. It's not like that. She she loves my cooking. Um when I don't put too much turmeric in it. Because she's like, it all ends up tasting the same thing. And by the way, if you put too much turmeric in the mac and cheese, it just makes it yellow mac and cheese. Like really yellow mac and cheese. Really? Oh yeah. My husband I've never tried that. Seriously? I've stained a rug with turmeric. I never thought of using it intentionally. <laughs> we use it for everything. We put it in soups, stews, roasts, like anything you can put seasoning on. It always goes in there just because it's super hearty and healthy for you. Um, Do you believe that though? Yeah. Why? Because it helps with inflammatory issues. I feel like people have made up uses for things that are terrible tasting and mm-hmm. they're like, it must be good for you well like like uh um uh, what is it uh carbon pro- um come hi- on hydrogen peroxide? hydrogen peroxide on wounds it doesn't actually clean the wound you don't have a greater propensity of surviving from a cut or something if you pour painful ass hydrogen peroxide on it really you don't wash it with soap and move on the hydrogen peroxide creates a reaction and it hurts and people assume that that's an indication of healing or sterilization it just hurts. So it doesn't actually sterilize is what no. you're saying? No. Why would it st- – if you want to sterilize, pour alcohol on it. Well, I usually do alcohol – pour alcohol Great. on it. That's pour why. alcohol on it. Don't do the bubbling and fizzing. That's meaningless. Now I got to look this up. Mm. Oh, I'm no. I'm looking it up the right now. Machine. I'm looking it up right now. Um, like okay. if I've gone crazy, you can call so me a liar. So with this whole like weird things being good for you – Keep in mind that we didn't have petroleum-based products to heal until, what, the beginning of the 1900s? Yeah, right. So we had every other method of healing for hundreds of thousands of years or however many years this earth has been here. Okay, I'm going to have to go ahead and interrupt you just real fast. From HoustonMethodist.org, it prevents healing rather than promoting it. (gasps) That's because its reactive power isn't specific to germs. Hydrogen peroxide also kills normal cells within the wound, including healthy cells and immune cells and slows blood vessel formation, all of which are important for wound healing. Boom. We like it because it hurts. Uh, Same thing with mouthwash. Interesting. You ever wonder why mouthwash is so intense? They could make it taste just fine, but people believe in a 
tinge of pain as being indicative of something valuable to you. Same thing with kale. We've been conditioned. We are, but we always do this. Well, you got to cut the center out of the kale. People need to stop no. eating kale with this. They rhyme. need to stop eating kale. They need to stop eating kale. 15 years ago, kale was a garnish that you saw at every buffet everywhere and had no parsley. use. No, they put kale in there too. That big bushy kale. Yeah. Do you? Okay. Like our, our grandparents were fine. Our great grandparents were doubly fine. They didn't have dinosaur kale smoothies every morning. Well, but they also didn't have 85 ingredients on a package that. Or... That's fine. Reduce the ingredients yep. on a package and don't add kale. Well, it's the kale... packaged. It's packaged. Listen There's the issue. Me. Listen to me. It's not like the kale doesn't help. The hydrogen peroxide doesn't help. Mm. Distasteful mouthwash doesn't help. They make it distasteful so you think you're getting a better product. It's true. It's true. I don't know what to tell you. Deception. Deception. Like, here's the other one. Kids toothpaste, it's terrible. Why? Well, I also don't use the normal kids toothpaste. Is it doubly terrible? One of them was. <laughs> like, why do you make it taste like bubble gum? Because first off, I've never oh, had we bubble don't, gum. We don't use those. They're that, artificially flavored, they're artificially co colored, and then they I, have fluoride. So. I know, but my point is, it, first off, if gum tasted that way, no one would ever have a second bite of gum. Okay. So the idea they're like, yeah. it's bubblegum flavored. It's like, it tastes like shit. That's what it tastes like. It's not actually bubblegum flavored. It tastes like something you just call it bubblegum because it's pink. You, mm. you Nazi. Gross. Like, oh God. Ah. See, all the ones my kids want are like strawberry, but they're like natural strawberry flavor yeah. because if my kids have any sort of anything. Does it actually taste like strawberry though? It's not terrible. There was one that well, not did yes. not taste like strawberry, though. It Both of my children had have requested individually, mm -hmm. please don't ever make me brush my teeth with that ever again. And respectfully, go. I was like, how bad is it? And I was like, Ooh, that's bad. That was gross. And I had to spit it out. And now I felt really bad that I made them brush their teeth with Dude, it for I a couple know. days. And I know. Argued. And like we're now, we take our kids. We're like, just do it. Like stop being just yeah. brush your teeth. And they're like, ah, yeah. And you're like, just run. I got to get on the underside. Yep. Like all this stuff. And, and they're then, like, Ugh. oh my God. Oh, like stop. Just rinse your mouth. You're going to be fine. Like, yeah, right. And then somebody comes over and yeah. like, oh, here, you can just use the kid's toothpaste. They're like, oh my God. And then you're like <laughs> offended for them. You're like, I'm so sorry. I didn't know when all the, like the time they have been communicating this. Oh, God. We're terrible people. so bad. It is what it is. I'm never going to recover from being a parent. You know what's really funny? I saw this chick. She It was on Instagram. And she goes, do you ever sit back and like your kids are playing like nicely together and then you have these moments where you just wonder, oh, my gosh, what kind of terrible trauma have I imposed on them that they're going to have to go to therapy for one day? How have I ruined them? I... And I think it's a singularly female thing. Have you ever felt that way? Have you ever just sat there and like thought through, I may have just messed my children up entirely? My son was <laughs> four. He was a little boy. Okay. I'm not going to go into the story, but it had to do with him trying to get frozen blueberries out of the freezer and me getting really mad at him. And then realizing that like my wife right before she left was like, oh, by the way, he didn't eat. No, he wasn't even four. He had to be two. Because we only had one and he couldn't speak that well because mm -hmm. he couldn't like articulate what was going on. Yeah. And I realized that I'm like, oh, you're hungry. I thought because he would play with the refrigerator. Yeah. And I'm like, stop playing with the refrigerator. And then he would like, get, you know, I'm a terrible. I can't even talk about it. It's okay. I can't talk about it. I'm well, terrible. But those therapy. are those moments that like I've had to learn to apologize if I catch myself like that. Something like um, I'll be on my older son about it. I'll be like, dude, you know the drill. You don't need to yell at him. You're not in control. You need to bring things to me if there's an issue between the two of you guys. Your kids do that too? Yeah. My oldest does that too. And he goes, but mom, he was trying to open the front door and he was trying to unlock it. And I told him it wasn't safe and I had to keep the door shut so that way he didn't go outside. And I had this moment where I was like yelling from upstairs. What are you doing? We're not going bike riding if you guys are like this. Right. And I had to go, hey, dude, I'm really sorry. Like, I shouldn't have yelled at you. I should have assessed the situation before I got on your case because that wasn't fair to you that you got scolded when you shouldn't have. You were just doing something that you were trying to be helpful. Okay, Brandy, what kind of military analysis protocol are you running? I should have assessed. I should have seen. I should have assessed. I should have set up like a pro to that thing. It's like, it. what kind of, like, I, my house is a hot mess 24 hours a day. I'm like, ah, it's like I'm hitting somebody. Be, I'm not, I, it could be my wife. I don't even know who I'm hitting. I'm just like, you know, like, when we got a puppy now, this like gorgeous. Oh. 
gorgeous oh. Lucille. She's gorgeous. Lucille's the best. And she's like this golden oh, lab cute. mix. No, because I'm in bed, like just about to fall asleep because I'm exhausted by nine o'clock. I'm dead to the world. Yeah. I'm like, oh, here it comes. Because you're a grown up. Death, take me. And here comes Lucille, like, <laughs> well, onto my bed, just right around. I'm like, God. So I now have to like get throw pillows and hit her. And then she thinks we're playing. <laughs> I'm trying to die. You know, like, it's not. The, I, and you were like, I should have seen. I should have assessed well, the situation and like figured out a compromise no. and communicated effectively. God, stop. No, I'm a it's one of person. those. You are not. It is. It's taken me time to think through okay, if this were me and this was my mom responding to me like this, how would it make me feel about our relationship? And how would it make me feel about the things I'm doing? I would just th- feel like I'm never getting seen. I'm not getting identified. Like my needs aren't getting met kind of thing. So I'd rather know that if I've taken a moment to go, oh, I shouldn't have said that, that I need to tell him that. Because it's, you know, at the end of the day, there's a respect level of I'm your parent and I'm in charge. But I also know that you're growing and your needs are growing. So I need to also be able to weave and bobble and respect that you are trying to be helpful. You weren't trying to cause an issue and yelling at you wasn't the way to like honor you being like a good kid. I know. It's kind of deep. I've had to do a lot of work. A lot of work. I've done a lot of work. A lot of work. I was not this kind of a person many moons ago. Many moons. Well, you didn't have kids via you many moons ago. (laughs) Oh my gosh. Okay. Have you seen all of the ACHD construction going on downtown? Yes. I almost died in it two days ago. Because I was going, well, okay, so on 44, okay. heading towards Eagle, yeah. I was going to make a left on Eagle to take my kids to the Y to go swimming. Okay. And all of the traffic is getting rerouted off of Eagle, mm-hmm. which breaks my heart. And I was like, we're going to die in this traffic. I didn't bring We'll food. never make it home. I didn't, like, we don't have enough water. Like, this is it. Hellacious. And like, God, man, Sweet Tea living down there. And well, then like Rembrandt. Rembrandt. Yes. And like, yeah, it's right in front of Rembrandt, it is right? I'm sorry. I know I'm yelling. I'm really, I've been talking passionate. to people about this for months. It it's is like, literally right in front of their business. Oh, God. So when I went today to pick this up, it detoured me because I was going north on right. Eagle. Okay. So it detoured me, like, yeah. when you turned you go, that McDonald's. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know streets. I know location. I think that's so. near, I think that's Plaza or something. Something like yeah, that. Yeah. yeah. And it turns and then you just have to make like a left a to left. go yeah. back to like behind Bricknology and squeeze yes. in and make a left there. You can go. do that, but it's easier if you go like to where that subway is and make a left. And then Rembrandt's has its own parking lot and all that stuff yeah. back there and you can yeah, get yeah. to everything. It's just take that extra two minutes and do the detour. The These businesses minutes. so desperately need people to continue to visit even with all this construction. Man, talk about the grit because think about it this way. You had COVID, yep. which came through and was a hot fucking mess. But then you you could like finagle some kind of work around where it's yeah. like, all right, I, you got to be outside, but then we'll make a tent that's totally enclosed, but you're outside, right? And then it was like, okay, you can walk in. Six feet is where the germ bugs are. So like wear your mask at six feet. But then the second you sit down, you get to take your mask off. It's great. And they were like, all these things were like, please, God, let us business get through. And even with that, yeah. you had workarounds. Now they're like, no, no, no. We've destroyed the main route of transportation to your establishment. Have fun, son. They are truly like they have pushed through and they have plowed just like many other businesses in our community right. and they're even offering at this point they want to make sure people come in their doors they're at all day happy hour yeah. your first prosecco is free coffee is free they want to make sure that our community is still knowing hey we're here we're advocating and they do dinner like dude they have full on breakfast lunch and dinner available so take advantage Rembrandt's yeah. is awesome they are awesome. It was uh, the Bodacious Pig and then Rembrandt's were the two restaurants I went to when I came here to see mm-hmm. to see Eagle. And I love them both. Like, mm-hmm. they're great. And, oh, yeah. And Shout Rembrandt's out. tries. They actually have good coffee. I'm a coffee snob. Especially, like, especially when you go to, like, a breakfast place. If yeah. you have bad coffee, I have nothing to say for you. But I actually really like Rembrandt's coffee. I was there. Yeah. Check this out. I went with a buddy of mine. He had, a, he had a business idea. He's like, hey, I'd love it's real estate thing. And I'm in real estate. I was like, yeah, sure. I'd love to come talk to you about it. We sat there from nine to 12 30 and he literally was like dude i have 
a 1230 appointment here again. And we, we were like, oh yeah, we'll just go nine to 10. But we got so into it and the lady serving us was so awesome. She was coming back, filling up the coffee. Yep. Not that I need any more, but she kept filling it up, 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 up and like having it, we we're joking. Time flew by. We we took that table and at no point did they ask us to leave. And then my buddy Anthony just had yep. to meet the next person. He was there for like six hours that day. It was great. And they were as yes. cool as could be. They have just the most accommodating culture. Yeah. So their staff, every t- person, and I talked to when I went in there was bubbly and kind Super and cool. warm, receptive. And that is just the culture they've created in their business where you feel like family when you walk in. And that is not a joke at all. Like I, we always talk about at the chamber, like you're not just a member of the chamber, you're part of our family. Right. So if you need something, you open your mouth, close mouth, don't get fed. Right? right. So how can we help you? And that's how we feel about Rembrandts and like those businesses is how can we coordinate as a community to pour into one another? And I right. feel like that's why they've stayed alive for so long, especially right. with COVID, is they did everything they could to weave and bobble, continuously right. pour into the community and keep those doors open. Yeah. They're yeah. great. They I really are. appreciate them. And I appreciate the food today. Oh, it's very, very tasty. This, oh, my heart and my belly are so happy. Ah, oh that's the gosh. best. Listen, Brandy, we have a hard stop because I know you got to get out of here. It's already We're already past it. Thank Perfect. you for coming in. Absolutely. I appreciate you. Can't wait to do next week. Do you know what we're doing next week? I'm not going to tell you what we're doing next week. God, we'll tune in. Because I like a good surprise. God bless America. (laughs) Thank you for coming. Thank you for having me, Matt. MTU Studios is the proud producer for the Ada County Sheriff Podcast, the Idaho Wildlife Federation Podcast, the State Representative Ted Hill Podcast, the Idaho State PTA Podcast, and many more. If you or your organization is thinking about starting a podcast, MTU Studios would love to help. Just check out mtustudios.com. 